I'm Ken Moody, and this is Ken Moody Hunting TV. What's the most important proponent of your bow hunting setup? The broadhead. And on today's show, we're going to explore what makes slick trick broadheads the best broadhead on the market. Stay tuned, we'll be back with that after all of these messages. Slick Trick Broadheads presents Ken Moody Hunting TV. Ken Moody Hunting TV is brought to you by Slick Trick Broadheads, Elite Archery, North Fork Technologies, True Fire Releases, Vapor Trail Archery, Gunner's Taxidermy, Fauna and Flora Custom House Brokerage, and Ken and Paul's Family Steakhouse. As far as I'm concerned, there are two major factors in what makes a great broadhead. Strength and durability and accuracy. We're going to explore those two things today as they apply to slick trick broadheads. What we're going to do first is show you how the slick trick broadheads are assembled and what makes them so strong. To begin with is this solid steel ferrule. This is a one piece ferrule. It's not two pieces, doesn't have a tip you screw on or any moving pieces at all. It is a solid steel from the tip all the way to the end of the thread single piece ferrule that's slotted to accept your blades. You have two blades here. You have a long slotted a blade with a long slot in the middle and then you have a regular blade. The first blade you want to use is this long slotted blade. It's really simple. You slide it into the ferrule in one of the slots you take your other blade, which is solid steel with a little notch in the top that fits onto the first blade you put in. You slide this one in and it slides up. Okay, basically that's it. Your broadhead's together. Okay, then you want to hold these carefully. Put on your retaining washer. Right, you can use a broadhead wrench, slide that in there, drill down, snug it up with your broadhead wrench, and there you have a fully assembled solid steel slick trick standard broadhead, which as I said before, my favorite broadhead in the entire line. And I can't emphasize enough, as far as durability goes, the importance of a solid steel broadhead. A lot of broadheads on the market today utilize aluminum in the ferrule uh, and or titanium, and aluminum and titanium are not as strong as steel. They're lighter than steel, that's why they're utilized. But I prefer the solid steel strength of a slick trick. Now, you want to take this broadhead apart, it's real simple. Just unscrew it. You have your assembled head here. You drop off the retaining washer. You slide out your secondary blade, the second blade you put in. Slide out your first blade. And you're back to your four simple components. Solid steel ferrule, two solid steel primary blades, and a retaining washer. That makes up your Slick Trick standard broadhead. So these are the components of your Razor Trick 100 grain broadhead. It's real easy to put together. Start with a threaded piece. Drop in your secondary blade. Be careful, make sure it gets down in there where it's supposed to go. 
Take your big primary blade, drop it in on top, okay, and there's a hole right there. It goes all the way through these blades. All you have to do now is take this small retaining screw, drop it in that hole, take your screwdriver that is inside the pack, and Use it carefully. It's very small. So just take your time. Get that retaining screw screwed all the way down. This will hold in your blades. Okay, there it is. Now you've got a solid broadhead. That's the end of that retaining screw I screwed in. It goes through both blades, locks them into your ferrule, and now you have a solid four blade slick trick broadhead. This is the Razor Trick. Another one of my favorite slick trick heads. Particularly good for Guys shooting traditional type uh, bows, three curve long bow. Four blade, cut on contact, nice thick solid steel blades, solid steel broadhead. Now that's what I like about Slick Trick. They are solid steel. No aluminum, no titanium. Now taking this apart, it's really simple. You just back out that screw. Takes a little time because it's small. If you got big clubby fingers, you might have a problem. Fortunately, I don't. Okay. Screw that all the way out. Okay, pop off your primary blade, secondary blade, and you're back to your original Razor Trick components. We'll be right back with more Ken Moody Hunting TV. Now, as I said earlier, there are two things that make a great broadhead, strength and durability and accuracy. What we're going to do now is go out here uh, outside of the workshop. We're going to do a little durability test. I'm going to show you just how strong a slick trick broadhead is. The way I test a broadhead for durability is I use landscaping gravel, the pea gravel type, that forces the broadhead to uh, conceivably strike every angle it can possibly strike as it moves through that medium, that being gravel. I'm going to take this landscaping gravel, I'm going to pour it in this bucket. I'm going to step back about 15 yards and I'm going to send that 100 grain Slick Trick standard broadhead into this bucket full of gravel and then we're going to see if it holds together. Now I'm going to tell you if this were a titanium broadhead, no doubt it would blow up inside the bucket. Uh, we're going to see how this solid steel broadhead holds up against uh, a bucket full of gravel just to give you a little uh, a test and show you the durability of a Slick Trick broadhead. First thing I have to do, put gravel, put the gravel in the bucket. Uh. All right, what we have here literally is a bucket through full of gravel. We're gonna launch this broadhead into it, see how it holds up. Okay, got my Elite Bow and my Slick Trick 100 grain standard. I'm standing about 15 yards away. I'm gonna put it into that bucket full of landscaping gravel. Then we'll go down and check the durability of this head and see how it survived this uh, strenuous test.
Okay. Well, as you can see, we center punched our bucket. And what I'm going to do now is uh, pour the gravel out. We're going to take a look at the broadhead and see what kind of damage it sustained going into this heavy pea gravel. Our slick trick broadhead. Can you zoom in on that? that you can see survived perfectly, perfectly. Dead on shot, 15 yards, bucket full of landscaping gravel. You've got a slightly dented tip. Blades are still totally intact and secured. Actually still a little bit sharp, believe it or not. That is the durability and strength of a solid steel Slick Trick 100 grain standard broadhead. My favorite broadhead. If it can shoot into that bucket full of gravel and be nearly 100% intact, what do you think it's going to do to that whitetail, wild boar, or African animal you send it through? Now let's talk about the second component of what makes a great broadhead, and that is accuracy. Now, while it's true that any straight broadhead can be made to shoot accurately from a well-tuned bow, the more aerodynamic the broadhead, the easier that tuning process is going to be. Now, conventional broadheads for a long time have been difficult to tune and shoot properly. Guys uh, who don't understand how to tune a bow would have an underspined or overspined arrow. You have to start with a properly spined arrow. And then to compensate for tuning mistakes, they would put five inch fletching, hard helical, anything they could do to uh, get that arrow to fly straight. Now what you have to remember about accuracy with the bow is the broadhead and the fletching are in a war. Okay, they're fighting one another for control of this arrow. And there's no such thing as perfect arrow flight. No arrow flies like a laser. laser. Every arrow oscillates as it goes down range slightly. It will all oscillate, carbon less so than aluminum, but all arrows oscillate as they go down range. And what the tuning process does is minimizes that arrow oscillation and makes your arrow fly as accurately as possible and reduces the stress between the broadhead and the fletching that is fighting for control of your arrow. In other words, you want this arrow coming off the bow as straight as possible so that it will recover as quickly as possible and fly relatively straight down range, putting the broadhead on target. Slick Trick goes with a four blade broadhead to give you that extra cut. This broadhead with its one inch cut will actually total cutting diameter cut more than a three blade with an inch and an eighth cut. You have an inch going both ways for a total two inches in width of cutting with the standard model. And uh, again, aerodynamics is the key. Any broadhead, any broadhead that's straight can be made to fly accurately, but how much time do you want to spend and how much hair do you want to pull out of your head to make that happen? Start with an aerodynamic head, more aerodynamic than the other broadheads on the market, and you will quickly have these broadheads flying on target, much more so than you would with any other head that I found conventional head that is. So accuracy, slick trick. Durability, slick trick. Strength, slick trick. And to beat it all, your best bang for the buck. They're not overpriced. Uh, my opinion is the best broadhead on the market. Next time you're in the market for a broadhead, take a look at slick trick. Uh, tune your bow properly and you'll be amazed at how accurately these broadheads fly for you. We've got more action coming up. Stay tuned. Ken Moody Hunting TV will be right back. 
Okay, it's that time. It's that time for the first annual wild boar shootout here at Clark Range Hunting Lodge. Now I've got Gary Cooper and Tony from Slick Trick here along with some other clients that came in to participate in this hunt. And uh, what we're going to do is watch the Slick Trick or, or see the Slick Trick broadhead in action as uh, it comes up against some big old European wild boar. And I have to tell you guys, this hunt started out terribly. We had a fog bank move in and extreme damp weather with it which caused my cameras to pack up and go down. But we got on these boar after two days of fruitless effort. We got on about six or eight boar that bayed in this thicket and we were able to get in there, move in there and start making things happen with the old slick trick. So what we're going to start with is our safety briefing, a little bit of the safety briefing I give to all the clients before they go out. And then we're going to hit the woods and show you highlights of day three of the Slick Trick Wild Boar Shootout at Clark Range Hunting Lodge. Y'all be real quiet and I'm going to call you. That's something Ken might not know. Somebody didn't take their medication this morning. That's something Ken might not know. Liquid medication. <laughs> owls, owls hate hogs. So if you call a hog, call an owl in, and all you gotta do is call that owl and take him straight to a hog. Tony and Bob are discussing strategies for the wily hog. There's our guide, Johnny. That's Kendall and his son Ken. Scene of the crime. Guys, bunch of them. I'm on it, I'm on it. I'm on it. Good shot. Good shot. Short. Yeah, yeah. Just right here. No, I want that one. Take out one. Yeah, I want the one, that one right there. I want that one facing me right there. Right here, right here. I got him. I got him right there. Good shot. Very good. Before we start, let me, let me advise you something. This bow has never missed. <laughs> I'm impressed, impressed with it. Dog. Okay, anytime. Watch the dogs, though. Watch the dogs. Hey! <laughs> Even with all this, he manages to run a successful broadhead company. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Hog's dead, four seconds down. Two days of chasing, daylight to dark, and day three, we uh, found these hogs somewhere along this. Matter of fact, we haven't been on this uh, strip the whole hunt, have we? No. We've not been up here anytime. We found, uh, I think, five hogs. Good job, Roscoe. And we Good put them job. down. Good job. They all got tricked, and one got smoked. Talk about intense compressed excitement that was it I'm telling you you cannot believe it after two full days of running those woods hard day three the Sun broke the day was clear and we were able to get on those bore and start knocking them out with the slick tricks in about 30 to 45 minutes I mean what happened was there was a sow in heat within that group the boar stayed right there with her they wouldn't leave her and Johnny our manager here at the guide had the bigger uh, portion of the group. He found the boar, got into him, and uh, then started to make it happen. After we got a couple on the ground, he called me. I was with another client named Bob. We had found some fresh tracks earlier that morning, and he and I were pursuing those tracks uh, into a big blowdown area trying to find the boar. Johnny called me and said, hey, we're into him up here on the hill. And when I got up there, it was pandemonium. I mean, there were dead boar on the ground. 
They wouldn't leave that sow, those boards. They won't do it if the, there's a sow in the heat. They get right there with them and hang with them. And she wouldn't leave the security of that blowdown. So we were able to move that group in. And again, after two fruitless days, day three, we made it happen. And uh, we were able to trick some of those big old European wild boar. And I have to tell you, those slick trick broadheads performed flawlessly. Uh, we killed those boar quickly. They went down quickly after being hit. All the broadheads were intact. And uh, just to reinforce what I told you, strength and durability, those are strong broadheads. And the next time you're in the market for a strong, accurate broadhead, give Slick Trick a look. You'll be happy you made that switch. All right, that's our show for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned a little bit about Slick Trick broadheads. And remember, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. And hope to see you again next week here on Ken Moody Hunting TV.